from the headquarters of Telesur English in Quito, Ecuador. This is from the South, and I'm Sweeney Gray. We begin in Palestine, where Israeli troops have killed at least 16 people during protests on the border with Gaza. Hundreds more have been wounded. 30,000 Palestinians converged on six locations at the Gaza-Israel border on the first day of what they're calling the March of Return. It was the biggest demonstration against Israeli occupation in recent years. The Israeli forces used tank shells, live ammunition, and tear gas against the protesters. IDF Chief of Staff Gadi Esankot told local media ahead of the protest that Israel has created a sniper task force consisting of over 100 sharpshooters to counter the demonstration. Esankot stressed that Israeli soldiers will use a lot of force to prevent any possible infiltration by Palestinians into Israeli territory from the Gaza Strip. Despite the danger, the Palestinians refused to back down. Today is a turning point for our people in our history of national struggle and fight, and our way to freedom and return. Today our people from the whole nation, from Gaza, from the West Bank, from the occupied lands in 1948, and from other countries, are launching this new phase. Israeli soldiers also fired at protesters in the West Bank, as youth threw stones at soldiers in the towns of Jericho, Nablus, and elsewhere. They're demanding the right of return for Palestinians driven from their homes when the State of Israel was created in 1948. I, faced with this sad event, place full responsibility on the Israeli authorities for the loss of the martyrs who were killed today following the firing of the occupation army soldiers against the popular and peaceful protests which came out to commemorate this anniversary and to take back its right in self-determination, like other countries around the world. I've asked the United Nations today for immediate action to provide international protection for our Palestinian people, facing this continuous and escalating daily aggression. And our correspondent in Gaza, Noor Harazin, has been at one of the hospitals where the dead and wounded were taken. She sent this report. We are right now in front of one of the medical units uh, that was uh, set here uh, almost 100 or 200 meters away from the border fence between Gaza and Israel. Every five minutes we, went to, we witnessed a new ambulance coming here and delivering a new injury to this uh, mini hospital. We saw men, women and also children uh, injured in the arms, in the legs and also in the head according to the Palestinian medical sources. It is afternoon here in the Gaza Strip and uh, the number of injuries is up to uh, 600 every one hour every 30 minutes the number go higher by 100 injury and new uh, people uh, being reported as killed until now the number of Palestinians killed is uh, nine people and now we will talk to uh, one of the uh, organizers uh, Mr. Uh, Isam uh, Mr. Isam can you please uh, Tell me more about yourself and about organizing this event. And also, can you please let us know about the latest on the ground, what has happened until now, and how this march is going? Uh, we, in the International Coordination Committee for the Great Return March, we have been working for three months for uh, this event, to start uh, this event. Uh, uh, today, uh, Gaza has uh, risen uh, up to their uh, uh, requests for uh, their rights, right for return. We have seen uh, uh, an image that has never been expected from Gaza out of the poverty, out of the, uh, the collapse of the economy, uh, out of all the siege. Uh, all of this, all the Gazans today came to these five open camps to spread a message that we are going to uh, go uh, inside to, re to retain our rights. Uh, uh, and go back to our uh, lands and homes that have been uh, we have been expelled from in the 1948 war. 
uh, according to the International Resolution 194, uh, part particularly paragraph number 11. What we have seen today is something unexpected at all. Hundreds of thousands have marched today and we, uh, this is only the start. Gazans are uh, going to sit in into these open, five open camps in order to send a message of peace to the whole world that uh, it is no, no longer uh, accepted by us, by the Palestinians, that uh, 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 the right to return, which has been endorsed by uh, the United Nations more than 130 times over the past 70 years, can be delayed no longer. Especially after Donald Trump, the president of the United States president, has wounded our, uh, our dignity by, uh, by touching uh, the right to return, which is uh, we cannot accept this at all. And uh, we have risen up to the, our rights and we will, not, we will not allow this to happen at all. Our rights have to be implemented if it is for the past 70 years, have not been implemented uh, by the international uh, community itself. We are going to implement it by our uh, bare feet. We found Thank you, Harazin, for that report. Switzerland has gr joined a growing list of countries who have imposed economic sanctions on Venezuela. Our correspondent in Caracas, Freddie Gillingham, has more. Switzerland, known for its clean air, its rich chocolate, and of course, its fondue. Politically, it is considered neutral, or at least it was up until recently. Now the country has joined a growing number of other nations in imposing economic sanctions against Venezuela. The Swiss government has declared asset freezes as well as travel bans for people, companies and organisations tied to the Venezuelan government. Reasons given echo those of the European Union, who in February imposed sanctions of their own. But who are these sanctions hurting the most? Telesaur spoke to analyst Herman Saltron to find out more. If you block a state and you do not allow them to pay its debts or get new ones, to pay for food and medicine, what you are doing is starving those people. It looks like some of the so-called democratic governments of the European Union are aligning themselves with Washington, who are leading these economic sanctions against Venezuela. But however, this administration in Washington not only contains climate change deniers, but also following the recent appointment of John Bolton, open warmongers. But this doesn't seem to be putting off its European allies. Venezuelans will decide on May 20th who they want as their president. But it looks like certain countries aligned to Trump have already decided who they don't want to win and are doing everything in their power to make that a reality. Freddie Gillingham, Telesaur, Caracas. The Venezuelan government has made a proposal to restart talks on its territorial dispute with neighboring Guyana. A statement from the foreign ministry said a diplomatic note has been sent to Guyana rejecting the UN Secretary General's decision to refer the dispute over the Essequibo region to the International Court of Justice. It said Venezuela does not recognize the ICJ's jurisdiction in the matter and proposes returning to direct diplomatic discussions between the two countries. Still in Venezuela, the National Electoral Council, or CNE, has approved the final registry for the upcoming presidential and legislative elections that will be held on May 20th. More than 20 million people will elect a new president, while almost 19 million people will choose their representatives in the legislative councils. For the presidential elections, all citizens of legal age are enrolled in the CNE, even those abroad. However, for the legislative councils, people who live abroad will be exempted from voting. Foreigners who have lived in Venezuela for more than 10 years, however, would be able to vote. A group of intellectuals, social activists and artists have written an open letter demanding that the government of Ecuador restore Julian Assange's freedom of expression. On Wednesday, Ecuador cut off internet access for the founder of WikiLeaks, who has been inside the Ecuadorian embassy in London since 2012, when the previous government of Rafael Correa granted him political asylum. The authors of the letter, including Noam Chomsky, the musician Brian Eno, and journalist John Pilger, say Assange...
also been denied access to a telephone and the right to receive visitors. They write, if the Ecuadorian government does not cease its unworthy action, it too will become an agent of persecution rather than the valiant nation that stood up for freedom. Well, time now for a short break, but join us again after a look at what our multimedia colleagues are reporting. A man who inspired a continent. Era un hombre demasiado humilde, igual que uno. Y andaba junto con uno. A current idea on every corner of his town. Y Chávez está una lectura originalísima de nuestra realidad. Hugo Chávez, a man with dreams. On Sunday, only on Telesur. Welcome back. Costa Rica goes to the polls on Sunday for the presidential election. It's a closely watched fight after a gay marriage controversy pitted a Christian preacher against the ruling party candidate. Now the polls show the front runners are running neck to, are tied neck and neck. Indecision, absenteeism, and a lack of political identity can be the words used to describe this election. Political players are weak due to the difficulties they face representing the people. There's a growing gap between citizens and political parties. Now that the parties have held their campaign closing ceremonies, many topics have been left undebated, such as the growing concerns about human rights. We've opposed same-sex marriage from the start. We haven't budged like some other candidates back in the first round. Fabricio Alvarado denies accusations that he's exploited people's religious beliefs to his own advantage. They've said we're using religion to win votes, but we aren't. We've only told Costa Ricans we plan to be of benefit to everyone, even those who belong to other religions. In another closing ceremony in San Jose, Acción Ciudadana stressed concepts that matter to the country, both inside and out. People want to hear peace, democracy, respect for both human rights and the environment when they hear the name Costa Rica. Many political parties and social movements support Carlos Alvarado and his team. It's not like any other moment in history when you have all of these political parties trying to help Costa Rica. The Supreme Electoral Committee officially announced the electoral blackout that comes into effect on Thursday. We intend to stop political discussion so that voters can reflect on their decision for a final time. Both parties are neck and neck according to the polls, but we will only know for sure on Sunday, April 1st. In Chile, the trial against Mapuche leader Machi Francisco Lincolnau and 11 other Mapuche activists continues. The Mapuche activists are being persecuted for their alleged responsibility in the deaths of businessman Warner Lutzinger and his wife Vivian Mackay in 2013. The trial takes place after an appeals court invalidated their acquittal. Machi Francisca Lincolnau's supporters have criticized what they consider to be an unfair trial. They say this is a deliberate persecution of the Mapuche people who are defending their land. She's going to prove her innocence in the next trial, and Chile will have to ask for forgiveness. The Chilean state must ask for forgiveness for what it has done against this Mapuche woman. Just because she faced the big companies and businessmen, she has been prosecuted, chased and attacked. In Argentina, six protesters detained in the northern province of Jujuy have been released. They were detained while campaigning next to the regional government headquarters against the closure of four public education centers. Our correspondent Sabrina Roth brings us the details. Saludos en estudio, saludos a toda la audiencia de Telesur. Four students, a counselor, Andrea Gutierrez, and lawyer, Hector Giuseppe, have been released after being arrested hours before 
during a demonstration in the Hugui province against the closure of four centers for youth and adult education. Their detention is difficult to justify as they were in the street protesting peacefully and did not so much as interrupt traffic. Those arrested had just helped to install a tent in front of the government house that was occupied by 30 students. Three days following this peaceful protest, the answer from the government has once again been repression and political persecution against those who are fighting for their rights. Award-winning Mexican filmmakers have joined demands for information on the whereabouts of three missing film students. Relatives of the students joined hundreds of others to protest in Mexico City on Thursday. The three students were last seen on March 19th in Guadalajara while filming a class project. Academy Award-winning director Alfonso Cuaron and cinematographer Emmanuel Lubeski have written an open letter demanding the government find the missing students and take legal action against those involved. And the Academy Award-winning director Guillermo del Toro retweeted several messages to his 1.36 million followers with the hashtags, we're not three, it's all of us. Every Peruvian president to have served over the last 28 years has either been to prison or has been investigated for corruption, according to the polls. The vast majority of the population believe that entrenched corruption in the Andean nation has undermined de democracy. Marches against corruption are becoming more frequent and they've been growing in size. I'm realizing what I live. I'm seeing the country in which I live. It's unfortunate and it's harming Peru. We lack a good education, good health, because they are busy filling their pockets. We want the congressional rats to get out immediately. In 1993, Alberto Fujimori staged a coup, saying the country's dire economy had to be dealt with. He changed the constitution in favor of business-friendly policies. Commentators say that put economic power in the hands of the political class and reduce the role of public institutions. Surveys show that stoke distrust in politicians. Governments respond to large companies and large monopolies and have neglected their duty to meet the needs of people, health and education. Roads are bad, people do not receive state benefits, and that's why people are unhappy with this so-called democracy. Operation Car Wash is an ongoing criminal investigation by Brazil into money laundering and corruption, and it unmasks many high-ranking officials, including former president Presidents Pedro Pablo Kuczynski and Alan Garcia. Ex-President Alejandro Toledo has an extradition order, and another former leader, Ollanta Humala, is in prison for corruption. It doesn't end with corruption. This is a system of influence that advantages 12 power groups and 24 transnational corporations, and their armies of lawyers, specialists, and consultants who end up in ministries or who go forth and buy the will of the Congress people. In the streets, people shout, may they all go, as progressive groups call for urgent electoral reform and a new constitution that will see to the needs of Peruvians and not just those in power. The Prime Minister of Dominica, Roosevelt Skerritt, has announced that he has secured over $100 million from the World Bank to mitigate the damage from last year's Hurricane Maria. Out of that, $40 million would be allocated to home reconstruction. Skerritt says he, the plan is to construct 5,000 new houses with the funds. Easter is a time when many Venezuelans travel around the country to enjoy the holiday. This year, over 7 million citizens have taken a trip to enjoy their days off. Beaches, resorts and national parks are filled to the brim. Venezuelan families are enjoying their well-deserved holidays, relaxing and having fun. Our first option is the beach. As a proper Venezuelan from La Guayera, life is better by the sea. La vida es más 
Playas como esta del Estado Vargas son... Beaches, such as these in Vargas State, are undoubtedly a favorite destination for Venezuelans to spend their holidays. Furthermore, this year, the government has set up 130 areas like these across the country to enjoy cultural, recreational, and sporting activities with concerts planned for the remainder of the week. Over 195,000 security officials will be deployed around the country to ensure that these holidays are spent peacefully and without incident. Venezuelans are always jovial. We make every effort to bring the kids, to spend time with family. We all came for a change in scenery. At recreational and cultural festivals, you can find tournaments for beach volleyball, chess, long jump, sprinting, and dominoes. Venezuela is the most beautiful place in the world. Its people, its places, there's nothing better. You can't compare it to other countries. Ours are the best beaches. We are Caribbean, hot-blooded Latinos, which is why we love the beach. According to official figures, over 7 million Venezuelans have mobilized during Easter holiday, and this is expected to continue through Sunday. We're going to take a short break, but join us again after a look at what our multimedia colleagues are reporting. Welcome back. Russian diplomats are being flown back to Russia after being expelled from Washington, D.C. This follows a diplomatic row with the United States. The U.S. and several other nations have expelled their Russian diplomats over the poisoning of Sergei Shripal and his daughter Yulia. Russia, in turn, has closed its St. Petersburg embassy and expelled U.S. diplomats. The Egyptian president, Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, has won a landslide election victory with 92% of the vote, according to initial reports. His only opponent in this three-day election, Musa Mustafa Musa, from the El Gad party, got 3%. Other opposition candidates were either barred from standing or left the race, following arrest and intimidation. Sisi came into office in 2014, after he led the military coup against the former president, Mohamed Morsi. Now let's have a look at some of the other stories making headlines around the world. Hundreds of people in Japan protested outside the Prime Minister's office in Tokyo as the corruption scandal involving Prime Minister Shinzo Abe and his wife, Aki, continues to develop. Protesters carried banners calling for Abe's resignation. 
Abe's wife is accused of pushing for the heavily discounted sale of public land to a right-wing primary school. Russian military officials have said they've reached an agreement with rebels in the Syrian town of Dalma in eastern Gouda for the rebels to leave the town. Dalma is surrounded by Syrian government forces and there are tens of thousands of civilians there. In avoiding needless casualties, the Russian Center for the Reconciliation of Warning Parties has achieved agreement with the leaders of Arar al-Sham on the evacuation of troops of this group from the Arasta al-Basal. Chinese Foreign Affairs Representative Yang Jiechi held talks with South Korean President Moon Jae in Seoul, with both sides pledging to promote a political settlement of the Korean Peninsula issue. Yang said tensions are easing and the overall situation could turn around for good. He urged all parties involved to promote smooth talks between the South Korean and DPRK leaders. Well, the Will Wrap has taken us to the end of this newscast, but for these and many other stories, you can find them on our website at tellusyourtv.net forward slash English. You can also join us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For Tell Us Your English, I'm Sunny Gray. Thank you so much for watching.